Now that I grasp the utter and limitless perfection of God, <laughs> no. Hondo. 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 I used to read a lot more than I do. When I was a kid, I had this collection of, uh, my parents got me a lot of books. I have this collection of Reader's Digest condensed illustrated books. I can't even find them on the internet. I can't find them on eBay. Where Reader's Digest, this is a magazine that every month they publish just stories, short stories, could be recipes, could be fiction, could be nonfiction, and they send this out to everybody. But they also publish condensed books. They'll take a regular novel and they'll take you know the, the most important parts or what they think is the most important and they'll condense it and I don't know make it more readable and put these in a little collection and they have there, there's dozens of these on eBay but they also did the same thing with classic novels like I remember Moby Dick they they would publish this tiny little book it had a picture on one side and then text on the other and it had the most important parts of Moby Dick and they condensed it to a kid's book it was like a hundred little pages maybe more and I had about a couple dozen of these books they were really small and really cheap and I read Moby Dick I read the Count of Monte Cristo Huckleberry Finn Mark Twain and my parents also got me this collection of it was a book about it was a collection of book books about values i think it was written by christians and might have been written by jehovah witnesses but i had that those books those books are all gone now but i read a lot and as you read of course you pick up words you learn what they mean you pick you pick up context and so you just learn a lot of vocabulary and so as a kid, I, I just knew a lot of words. One word that I've known for a long time is the word maximum. Knowing that God is a maximally great being. But Tim Stratton does not know what maximum means. The maximal greatness of God. A maximum is a limit. It means we have this container, say a bucket of well, an empty bucket, say it's a five gallon bucket. If we maximize the bucket, we fill it to its limits. To say that God is maximally great means that there's some standard that defines how great he should be, and God fills that, that standard up. This is a problem. It means that God is limited. God may be perfect, but his perfection has limits. Tim Stratton is a terrible theologian. He doesn't even know what a word means. Maximum. I wrote this comment. A maximum is an upward limit. That means to you God is not infinite, but finite. It means there is this container in God's greatness, or whatever you say, fills it to its limits. His greatness is at a maximum. Choose a different word from Google as great, high, or intense as possible or permitted. Meaning there's something outside of God that stops how great he can be. His greatness reaches the maximum of some other standard that is not God. So there is something greater than God. According to Tim Stratton. Apologetics is vital in the church today because it strengthens the faith. Tim Stratton also says that apologetics strengthens faith. Apologetics does not strengthen faith. If anything, it weakens faith. Paul said we walk by faith and not by sight. Apologetics is nothing but sight, which means it is the opposite of faith. Apologetics is all science and all reason. It means all these things that we understand. We can see with our eyes, literally our five senses. What sight means to Paul is both literal and metaphoric. What we see 
what we hear, taste, and touch, and smell with our senses, that is that is sight, and also what we understand with our minds. But faith is the opposite of that. Faith is when we trust God, when what He says does not make sense, when we do not understand what He says. Job said, "Though He slay me, yet I will trust Him," meaning. Nothing in my life attests to God's love for me, to God's grace, to God's glory. Everything is shambles. Everything is destruction. This is what Job saw. This was his sight. But still he proclaimed his trust in God. That is what faith is. Not apologetics. Apologetics weakens all of that. And we put our faith in our reason and our senses and then that leads us to God. That is exactly what Frank Turk believes. The real definition of faith is trusting in what you have good evidence to believe. But what strengthens faith is trials, like Job endured. All the things that he endured, yet he still trusted in God. And in the end, he learned humility. He learned to trust God no matter what made sense. And he said that at the beginning, and it became more clear to him, became very clear to him at the end, and God said, who do you think you are to question me? You have no idea what what I can do, who I am. You can only grasp a bare minimum of my greatness. You don't understand anything that I understand. That is what God said to Job. And that is what strengthened his faith. The humility that came with, well, with God's chastisement. And God led him through that, and in the end, he didn't explain anything to Job. In, in the end, he asked him, who do you think you are to question me? It was about him knowing that God is sovereign over everything. We trust God. We seek him. No matter what makes sense, no matter what, no matter what we see with our eyes or understand with our minds. But that is, that is Tim Stratton's theology. Of course, he doesn't like Calvin. That's his latest video. So I'm going through Christian YouTube and Tim Stratton is, what would we say? D, D tier? No, he's F tier. He's a Molinist. F tier. Now that I grasp the utter and limitless perfection of God. He also said, now that I grasp the, other, the utter and limitless perfection of God, I say something quite similar to Lewis. He was quoting Lewis. And he like basically imitated, imitated one of Lewis's quotes. Lewis, C.S. Lewis was not a good theologian. He was an apologist, and Geisler takes a lot of his influence from Lewis. And Lewis, in *Mere Christianity*, he basically just says, uh, "Let's let's just avoid using the Bible and see what we can figure out on our own," because atheists don't trust the Bible. Who cares what atheists trust and don't trust? But Tim Strand says he can grasp the utter and limitless perfection of God. Who can do that but another infinite being who is as perfect and limitless as God? What is wrong with you, man? Why do you talk like this? Where did you learn to speak? And did they have the same number of numbers as we do? You know, from 1 to 700?